forecast first. Sponsored by ESL Federal Credit Union. Hey there, good evening. Uh, 35 degrees. Look at the humidity, 100%. Uh, we've got some fog, a little bit of drizzle out there. That's going to continue for the rest of the evening forecast first. Uh, overcast skies, lower 30s, maybe even some freezing drizzle to the south. More details on that coming up. My family's restaurant might be able to survive. A local diner struggling during the pandemic gets a helping hand thanks to the internet. And battling COVID-19 at local nursing homes, how one facility is dealing with a surge in cases. From the team you can trust, this is News 8 at 6. Good evening and welcome to this web edition of News 8 at 6. As the holiday season comes to a close, this new year brings new concerns over the COVID-19 virus. U.S. infections have soared past 20 million cases. More than 349,000 people have died nationwide, and the vaccine everyone was waiting for has been slow to get to people who need it most. Jack Watson joining us live now from Kirkhaven Nursing Home on Alexander Street in Rochester. Jack, that nursing home is expecting the vaccine this week, but not before a serious surge of COVID cases. That's right, Maureen. And like so many nursing homes throughout this pandemic, Kirkhaven is now dealing with that spike in cases at this nursing home. It's resulted in some changes for residents and families. In an update, the Kirkhaven Nursing Home says it has had 19 positive tests since December 30th. That consists of 12 PCR tests on Wednesday and seven rapid positives on Saturday. That's per a letter sent by Kirkhaven to its community where they said, quote, in an endeavor to maintain total transparency, we continue to report general information related to any positive COVID-19 cases at our facility or if any resident suffers a COVID-19 related death. In response, Kirkhaven is now enacting new protocol. They say that all residents except those previously positive in the last 90 days will be retested every three to seven days over the next two weeks. In-person visitation is suspended until further notice. Positive residents are being relocated to designated COVID areas. All residents who tested positive will remain under quarantine. As of Saturday, according to New York State, there have been 20 confirmed COVID deaths at Kirkhaven throughout the pandemic. There have also been four COVID presumed deaths. Moving forward, Kirkhaven is offering visitation by FaceTime and Zoom, encouraging residents and families to do their part as they work through the ongoing challenges of the pandemic. Well, Maureen Kirkhaven says that its residents and staff will begin to be vaccinated tomorrow, January 4th, and they will continue that vaccination process in the coming weeks. Live in Rochester, Jack Watson, News 8. All right, Jack, thank you. And as the surge of COVID continues in the Finger Lakes region, UR Medicine is closing one of its outpatient surgery centers. The aim is to ease the burden on the overall hospital system. The Sawgrass Center will close this Wednesday. URMC says the move will make more staff available for inpatient care and allow the hospital system to reach the mandated capacity level set by the state. URMC will release more information on the closure of Sawgrass tomorrow. In our Bills report, the Buffalo Bills dominating yet again today. We are talking about what they did today to Miami. Sports Director Thad Brown joining us live from Orchard Park. Thad, wow. Maureen, this was a game where the Bills starters played only in the second half, if they even played at all. And yet the Bills won 56-26, scored the second most points in team history. The backups beat a Dolphins team that might make the playoffs 28 to 20 in the second half. The Bills got touchdowns on offense, defense and special teams for the first time in nearly 20 years. Needless to say, it was a pretty good way to end the regular season. It was good to watch. It was, uh, you know, I didn't think we were we were uh, on our game early. Uh, I thought that they were doing a good job giving the credit and um, but we, we kept our composure and, and I thought uh, the players came back and executed at a high level and then we started really like you mentioned, uh, complimenting one another, which is fun to watch. We got a very veteran run team, guys that care about each other, guys that just want to work hard and do their jobs. And, um, ultimately, that's what we wanted to do, and I just do our job and you know, do our best before we try to win a football game. And, uh, that's what we did. And um, Again, it was a three-phase deal tonight, offense, defense, special teams, guys making plays, stepping up all over the field. It was awesome to see. 
Now, the Bills don't know yet who they will play in round one of the playoffs. It'll be one of Indianapolis, Tennessee, or Miami, and that will be determined when the games going on right now conclude about 730. But more important to the Bills is not maybe who they play, but when they play. If the Bills do get a Saturday game, that means a short work week. And Sean McDermott said tonight, I'll be prepared to work tonight if need be. With the Bills Report in Orchard Park, I'm Thad Brown Live. Maureen, it's back to you. All right, Thad, thank you. A local restaurant is getting help from a unique source. The Barstool Fund is using donations to support restaurants struggling during the pandemic. It's a nationwide program. Durf's restaurant in Fairport getting a boost from thousands of people now across the country. Kathy Lloyd, who runs Durf, says her niece applied for the funding and says the money is giving them a fighting chance. But the reality of running at 50% capacity with the costs of running still at 100% capacity, I was to the point that I was going to have to make the decision to go back to takeout only even before this happened with the support from BarstoolSports.com because it was just ends weren't getting, weren't meeting. <laughs> Tears of joy. And hope and hope to survive that I might my family's restaurant might be able to survive. 100% of the net proceeds from these donations go to DERPS and other small businesses that are on the Barstool Fund. We'll have more on this story and how restaurants are coping tonight on News 8 at 11. New at 6, a warning from state police. There have been multiple reports of people stealing cars while out for a test drive. The thieves ask the seller to exit the car and then drive off once they do. This scam has occurred in Livingston, Wayne, Monroe, and other counties. State police suggest having someone you trust with you or using a safe trading station at your local police station. A gloomy weather day in Rochester as gray winter skies set in. We got some light snowfall today, but didn't, didn't stick around. Mm -hmm. James Gilbert, pun intended, <laughs> just for you. Hey, you know what? I, I love it, and uh, you might not love the forecast, but uh, hey, why not? Got to stay light. All right, uh, work week ahead, a couple of days we're keeping an eye on tomorrow, Tuesday. Some very light uh, snow showers, maybe some wet snowflakes in there. A little bit of drizzle out there this evening. I mean, not the prettiest, and temperatures all pretty much stuck in the lower 30s. A spotty drizzle for you tomorrow as you're enjoying your coffee in the morning. Temperatures just holding in the lower 30s. I mentioned drizzle, uh, Finger Lakes a little bit cooler, maybe even upper 20s, so some of that could be freezing drizzle. That's really the only threat that could uh, maybe make your morning commute a little bit more difficult than it should be. But otherwise, not too much of an issue as we kick off the first work week of 2021. A little bit of freezing drizzle for the morning, but otherwise cloudy, bit of fog out there as well. And the temperature range not moving much. We're going to be kind of stuck between the mid-20s and the mid-30s, which is about average. We should be seeing lows eh, closer to 20 in the upper teens, but uh, yeah, we're kind of just stuck in this pattern. I'll show you exactly what the pattern is here. Future cast shows low pressure sitting off of the coast of Cape Cod, we'll say, and it's just going to continually spin cooler air with a general east northeast wind, drizzly conditions, mostly cloudy, low level clouds just persist, maybe a flake or two. Yeah, day after day after day. This lasts into Tuesday, this lasts into Wednesday, maybe even into Thursday as another low pressure system kind of sets up off the coast. Yeah, so drive could look a little bit like this for your Monday commute with a bit of drizzle out there to start the day. We should see a little bit of clearing, but uh, expect to, to not need your sunglasses for the next couple of days. No issues with the evening commute there. News 8 eight day forecast. Do we see any breaks? Mm, maybe a little bit by Friday and Saturday as uh, high pressure tries to work its way in. Maybe we see a little bit of sun by the weekend, but another chance for some flurries mix in there as well. So um, a gray week coming up, uh, Maureen. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. What can you say? Yeah, you just take your sunglasses and just throw them where you will probably lose them and have to buy another pair, but yeah. <laughs> you just don't need them this week. Yeah. In the meantime, let our smiles be our sunshine. There you I love it. <laughs> Thanks, James. And thank you, everybody, for joining us on the web. We will see you right back on News 8 at 11 tonight. We we'll hope you join us then. Have a great evening.
Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and our apps for both news and weather.